Oh, cock! <laughs> What's up YouTube? My name's Quickie, welcome back to the channel. Duh, I ballsed up. <laughs> I did it wrong, Dad. Um, oh, what did I do? Right, okay, when I was doing the carbs and stuff, setting the float heights, I did it wrong. Carbs that I've done in the past, basically, I've, I've always been different. But you set, the, you set the carbs sort of flat and level, and then you have a tube that comes off the bottom, you fill it full of fuel. So, you know, the float um, uh, does its thing and it seals it off and blah, blah, blah. And then you measure how much fuel goes up this tube in relation to the casting. Yeah, that's not how you do it on these. <laughs> I thought that you just set it flat and level and then you measure the top of the float. Well, you don't do it that way. Apparently, you want to measure it such that the, the needle is just touching the seat. Just touching the seat. Um, which means you've got to have the carbs on an angle. I didn't know that. I just looked in the book of words found out what the float height should be and I did it when it was flat and that was wrong. That's going to be a couple of mil out. Doesn't sound a lot, but you know, size matters. <laughs> couple of mil, it all adds up, doesn't it? <laughs> right, we've also got some oil. So I can do an oil and filter change, which is sweet. High flow filtro. Ooh. And I'm shoving motel oil in it. Um, but it's, you know, it's oil in it and it's not a bad one. Um, so that can go in there, and I also want to get the forks back in it so I can get it sitting on its own wheels. I can do those caps up properly, because I intend starting it this weekend, so I need to get all this stuff done. Um, I did have, <laughs> I've got this thing about running an engine when it's just like tied down or on a jack and this, that and the other, because I, I tried that once. I used to have an SP1, awesome bit of kit, loads of fun. But yeah, that's a big old twin. And I did that with that, and it just rattled itself off the jack, and that was not a good day. <laughs> so I want it sitting on its own shoes, and then we can, we can have a crack at starting it later on this weekend, I'm hoping. That'd be cool, innit? <laughs> um, still haven't got the brake pads. Still waiting on them. Um, they were, today is Friday. They were supposed to be here either Tuesday or Wednesday, and I got home from work last night, half past 11, to a little message on eBay going, oh, we posted it. <laughs> Genius. I know, things are disrupted at the minute with the virus and everything else, I'll get all that. So it's not a problem, and it ain't gonna stop us from starting it. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm having this. Right, Where's, where'd I put, here we go, there we go.
Right. Well, I don't like it, but it's going back on for now. Um, I've got a mate who's, um, he's got himself, his, his name's Dill, Dylan. And he's got himself a Ninja, but he's swapping it for a Bandit 600, which he, he used to have and he quite likes them. Um, his bike has got a stock exhaust on it, I think. Um, and he don't want it to be quiet, he wants it to be loud. <laughs> so, he might be having this and I'll have his exhaust. <laughs> but, I've had quite a few comments and stuff about why oh, it's got to be loud. It's going to be really loud. Yeah, I know it is. So, I want to get this running at the weekend. It's not swapping bikes over until the weekend, which means we can start it up with this and you can all have a good laugh. <laughs> So for now, he's going back on. Right, so the bung's all done up with a new washer, new oil filters on, I primed it, wiped some grease around the o-ring, stuck that back on. Uh, you know the drill, there's nothing fancy there. Um, annoyingly though, <laughs> it screws in right above the flame and collector for the exhaust, so it all drips, you're going to get some drip out, and it's dripped down and it's gone in there. I've given it a squirt with cleaner, but I know there's still going to be some in there, so when it does get hot, it's going to smoke. And I haven't got a funnel. <laughs> Slow and steady. Right, this apparently takes 3.3 litres. Um, and there's four litres in this jug. So most of it's going in, but um, rather than just going by quantity, we'll have a look on the sight glass and see what's in there. All right, let's just make sure nothing's dripping out the bottom. Good. Carry on. Right, we're getting there. So the way you're supposed to check this is the bike. We do it on its on its centre stand if there is one, but there ain't one. <laughs> Supposed to be on its own wheels held in an upright position, which it is. And then you just have a look through the shot glass. Um, there's two marks here. As long as it's between them, then you're in. I tend to try and run it nearer the top. Um, I always have done, uh, especially on the race bikes. Um, but we are nearly there, I think. A bit more. All right, we're just below the top level. That's fine. Happy with that. Sweet. Right, so front ends all back in and together and nipped up. I did the the fork caps as well, so they're all nice and snug. Um, check the the wheel bearing while the wheel was out. Turns quite happily. It's not graunchy or anything, which is cool. Um, I did have the seals off and put a little bit more grease in there before I shoved it all back in. The axle's all been greased up. Nothing on the nut. You know the the thread on the end, um, and also greased up the speedo drive. Just because there was grease in there before, you could see there was, but it was a little bit bleh, so I just cleaned it out and put some new stuff in. 
So that's all good. I did try it again once it was on the, the bike and all torqued down and everything. Just trying to rock it and see if there's any play in there in. So we're in there, happy with that. Um, loud exhaust is back on. Just because I need some sort of exhaust if I'm going to start it. Um, the gasket's in the top end looking great. Um, and if I switch another exhaust out, then I'll be getting new ones anyway, but it's on. Um, and it's fairly steady, but it still hasn't got a centre mount to it. <laughs> so there's that, and then it's just had an oil change. So, what's the time now? 12 o'clock. Do all that in a couple of hours, which ain't bad. Happy with that. I'm going to need to chip off and get back to home, have something to eat, and then get ready for dinner for, for work. So I'm pretty much going to call it there for today. Um, it's weird, I've been knocking out a video a day whilst I've been on holiday. You get back to only a few hours in here a day and it's actually really, really difficult. Um, I'm going to start editing when I get home. It might go up tonight, it might go up tomorrow. Don't really care. Um, it will go up when it goes up and hopefully you have some lump. Um, at the weekend, back in here tomorrow, so the carbs are coming off, we're going to set the float bowls properly I will check the gap on the spark plugs. I've got some new ones on order, but for now they'll have to do. Um, and I still haven't got the brake pads. I'm hoping they turn up. I really, really am. I don't know when they posted them, but I got a message at stupid o'clock last night. So if they get here, we can get the brakes all sorted and get them back on, start it up, and I'll have a hoon up and down the yard. <laughs> Scared the natives. That'll be all right. <laughs> Right, let's put you back together before I move you. Right, see I really want to go on it now. <laughs> Bike only cost me 400 quid. So you don't mind, you know, putting something into it, do you? Not for that sort of money. And to be fair, none of this is major. None of this major. Um, it's just sort of routine maintenance, really. And it's the sort of thing I think you'd do to any bike when you get it anyway. Pull it apart and have a look and get used to it. Um, I'm not too fussed about having to pull the carbs and stuff off again, just because I'll get more familiar with doing it and more familiar with the bike. So that's all good. We haven't got any drips. So I wiped the bench down, left it a bit, and just, um, you know, just check and make sure there's no drips there, which there ain't. So that's all good. Um, everything sealed as it should be. Um, I've got the fuel and everything, so really, tomorrow we should be starting it. Should be, I do want to run it with that exhaust, just to show you how loud it is. Hopefully, I'll do this trade with Dylan, and uh, I don't know, we'll see what's what. I'll, just, I'll put it to stock, I really don't give a monkeys, it's just another form of transport to me. And then we can get used to it. Um, the forks, uh, there is absolutely no adjustment on these, nothing at all. Um, but somebody did chip in a comment that you can get a cartridge emulator for them. Um, so what it is, it's like a little doohickey thing that you slide down inside. To, to make any adjustments, you've got to have the forks apart again. It's like a little valve and it goes down inside the fork leg and it's trapped by the spring and it just limits the flow so you can mimic the, the, the damping that you'll get in a cartridge fork. There's, no, there's not going to be the same sort of adjustability and stuff. Um, and they cost about 125 quid just for two tiny little things like this. But if it improves the handling, improves the fork performance, that might be worth it. Because like the project bikes, they're all going to be going on track as well. So we're going to want them to, to do the business. Um, the other thing I'm thinking of for the project I'm, I might look at some other conventional forks. Like when we started in super sports, that was when the R6s first came out. And we used to haul that thing around the track like anything. Um, so I'm not so I might go an R6 front end. I don't want to put upside downies on them because everybody does that. And apparently the rear shock, uh, if you use the one off a CBR600RR, um, there is a little bit of a modification that has to happen to the under tray to fit in the reservoir, but they're near as damn it a swap out by the sounds of things. And all the back end of this is getting chopped off eventually anyway. So that might be a good suspension option. 
I don't know. It's all been set to stock to kick off with, just because that way I can hoon about on it and see what they can do and see what you can change and, you know, try and get it to handle a bit better. But if I end up swapping, you know, components like that out for the build, why not? So that's it. That's where I'm leaving it for today. Thank you very much for joining us. Do hope you're staying safe. And um, I will try and get this video out later on today. Uh, I might do it when I get back from work. I don't know. We just have to see how we go. Um, and I'm back in here tomorrow and I'm starting the bugger. I am. She's going to run. <laughs> Loudly. <laughs> but anyway, that's it for today. Thank you very much for joining us. Laters. <laughs>